Hi guys, my name is Derek. I've, I'm an archaeologist and I'm a tour guide here in the park. Um, today I have an array of um, uh, flint tools that would have been used by the Mesolithic people here in Ireland nine, nine and a half thousand years ago. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about one or two of them today. Now, these are what we call microliths. Okay, now microliths, they've been found in a lot of the Mesolithic sites around Ireland, especially Mount Sandal, the first place to be excavated. Now microliths would have been attached to a stick like this, simple, okay, you would attach them all along, maybe five or six going down one inch, five or six going around, so you'll maybe 20 little flints going around this little stick, they would have used it as a spear for catching fish, and we know that these people ate plenty of fish, okay. Now I also have today is a knife. Okay, this simply, it looks like a, it's just a stone, it's a flint, right? We used it as a knife, they would have used it for cutting, okay? So they were cutting all their meat uh, up with these little flint tools. And today they're still very sharp, nine, nine and a half thousand years later. Um, this will use this big one as well. This probably uses a weapon. There's no evidence of warfare from the Mesolithic, but they may have been fighting one another. But it was a tool, of course, as well. They could have used it with their hand, okay? They would have used it for stabbing, they could have used it for scraping as well, but they probably attached it, much like the, the microliths, attached to a, a larger stick, using the sinew of animals, uh, attached it and used it as a spear, okay? So as a hunting spear. Welcome back. Uh, the last time we spoke about the Mesolithic stone tools, this week we're gonna talk about the Neolithic stone tools. Neolithic, of course, is the new Stone Age. What's new about them? They're the first farmers in this country, okay? So in the Mesolithic, 9,000 years ago, the entire island was covered with forest. So 6,000 years ago, in the Neolithic, these farmers had to clear this forest because they needed land for their animals to graze, and of course, they needed land to grow their crops as well. So we get polished stone axes. Now, they say that polished stone axes were prestige objects, but we know they were clearing the forest with them as well. Stone axes such as these would have been attached to, again, hafted or attached to a, pieces, a piece of uh, timber, okay, and use it like an axe for chopping down trees. Derek here back again. Over the last couple of episodes, we spoke about the Mesolithic stone tools, we spoke about the Neolithic stone tools. Today we're going to talk about the Bronze Age. To make bronze, you have to mix copper and tin. We have loads of copper in Ireland. In fact, the first um, artifacts, the beginning of the Bronze Age is what we call the Chaltolithic, okay, we just get copper artifacts, copper axes and copper knives, okay. Then they discovered tin and they discovered that they uh, realised that if you mix tin with, with uh, copper you get a much stronger uh, metal. So we get these little tiny simple bronze axes and then more elaborate, these more elaborate uh, Axe, bronze axes, these are called flange axes. We also have socket axes, much like this socket spear we have here. Okay, so this would have been hafted, hafted simply like, like the Neolithic stone tool, hafted like that into the piece of wood like that. Okay, whereas the flanged, flanged axe would have been hafted, say this is a, a stick, stick would have been split in two and you had this little nozzle on top to actually tie it around for extra security. Bronze socket spear here, but they like the socket axes. Simply pull onto a stick and haft it in. Okay, we have our bronze spear here. In the Bronze Age, we get an awful lot of gold. Okay, and if you want to see any of these uh, artifacts, guys, go to the National Museum in Dublin. Okay, all the ground floor in there that's all the Bronze Age. There's loads of weapons, and of course fantastic amazing looking gold that was uh, fashioned in the Bronze Age and worn by our Bronze Age ancestors. Derek here again at back at the History Hut. Uh, it's a bit wet today so we're uh, go not going to stand here all day. We're going to go up to the ring fort. Hi guys! So here we are in the ring fort. It's lots of different artifacts found in the ring fort, such as weapons. Okay, there are a lot of spearheads that have been found in, in ring forts. Um, they would have been making these on site. They've also been making little knives for themselves, just for ordinary, simple day-to-day -day, uh, things, for cutting vegetables, even peeling vegetables. Pottery, of course, as well, has been plenty of pottery found in ring fort. Lots of different types of 
Uh, animal bones have been found, lots of different types of cereal, because these people were farmers, as I said. Lots of wheat, lots of barley, uh, oats, rye, and even pulses like peas and beans being grown as well. Also found brooches, like the brooch I'm wearing here, and I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the tarot brooch, but we find small little pin brooches as well, uh, made from metal and made from uh, bone also. As you can see, the little holes in the top of these, they were used for sewing. So they had to have something to store, sew, sew their clothes. So they were using um, bones um, for making needles. Lots of bird bones, duck bones especially, being used to make these needles. Whilst were they sewing, they were sewing their leather shoes, okay? These people had, not everyone had them, but some people would have had leather shoes. And you can see the stitching here. This is the type of needle they would have used to make these. So that's it for me today, okay? Join us here at the Ringfort again for our next instalment of the History Touch because we're going to visit our Souterrain. A Souterrain is an underground passage that have been identified in Ringforts. We have one here in the park. We're going to go down into it the next time.